Good afternoon. My name is Henry Karskeden, and I was working with Dr. Chen on forecasting uh, time series data with influenza. So rather than forecasting the traditional case counts, we we're forecasting CDC data that rank the flu in intensity levels from one being the lowest to 10 the highest. So this is ordinal discrete data rather than uh, more continuous data. Um, and so this was available for 50 states on a week by week basis. On the side here, you can see a little plot of um, the states for the 2017 to 2018 season and the 2018 to 2019 season. And so this um, region right here is where they're more likely to fit in. But as you can see, there's a lot of variability between states. So sort of focused on trying to model um, a good fit for each state. Uh, another interesting feature of the data would be the high amount of autocorrelation in it. So this informed our modeling a lot. And as you can see here, um, this is a autocorrelation, partial autocorrelation plot for Virginia, which is sort of representative of the other states. Most of it is due to the lag one autocorrelation. So that's um, the most recent time steps, the most recent observation. So there's a little bit of past modeling that had been done that I was working on improving. Uh, it was an ensemble method that used the SEER system of ODEs, um, an ordinary regression on the time series, uh, in addition to this naive method that I defined below because it's sort of a more unusual one, and a Markov chain model. Um, and so interestingly, the ensemble and all these more um, sophisticated models were uh, vastly underperforming this naive method. Um, and so I set about trying to find uh, some new models that might improve the ensemble to the point where it's uh, passing this benchmark that we set here with a uh, naive. So started off by exploring recurrent neural networks. And so if you're not familiar with them, they're um, pretty similar to your normal neural network, except for they're intended for sequence data. So naturally, it uh, might be a good fit for a time series. But um, because we're relying on a univariate time series, and uh, there are a lot of parameters to be tuned with not uh, too many training examples, they didn't fit the data very well. So moved on past those. Uh, then we took a look at some more traditional machine learning methods, um, such as uh, various ensembles of uh, decision trees, as well as support vector machines. Support vector machines actually turned out to be quite a good fit for the, um, the task, whereas the decision tree ensembles didn't do quite so well not entirely sure uh, why they were performing so poorly. Um, also looked at some classical uh, time series models, such as uh, SREMA, so that's the seasonal variant of uh, ARIMA, which is uh, making use of uh, differencing and autoregression to um, pull out some of the autocorrelation in that data. Uh, and also uh, Holt Winters, which um, also makes use of uh, the seasonal structure of the data, uh, tries to parameterize the model to fit the structure of the data. So, um, moving on, uh, these new models that were performing quite well still weren't uh, bringing the performance of the ensemble up uh, to anywhere near the benchmark. It sort of stalled out. Um, and so we figured out that this is because it wasn't really taking into account the um, accuracy of the base classifiers very well. So what I did is I set about trying to um, create a different mechanism to um, ensemble the base classifiers and use that accuracy information uh, going down to the weekly and state level. So that actually ended up improving things a lot when I got rid of the Sierra model, which is performing quite poorly, added in the uh, support vectors and the two classical time series models that I discussed earlier. Um, but as you can see down here in this table, the performance was not uh, unequivocally better uh, for this new ensemble. Um, and in fact, the naive actually did um, significantly better with this Matthews correlation coefficient, which is sort of a um, providing a, a balanced interpretation of the uh, confusion matrix. Um, and so, um, in my opinion, looking at this, it seems to be that uh, devote some further exploration to the SREMA, which uh, on all three of these metrics um, sort of sits towards the better end of performance. And um, so there's some possible room for improvement there by uh, pulling in some 
outside data, such as uh, climat uh, climatic data uh, for each state. And it's also worth noting that um, the performance for all of these methods was the poorest um, for the, the classes that were traveling between the valleys to the peaks and between the peaks to the valleys because there's the most um, changes in slope and variation from that. So that concludes my presentation. <laughs>